right. So we have Fernando with us. Um, so I'm guessing we are going to go with the pre-recorded session here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to share that here in Hopin. And uh, since Fernando is here with us, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. And uh, I'll also post a link to the YouTube uh, pre-recorded video. And uh, if you're facing any technical glitches while viewing it here in Hopin, please feel free to directly watch it through YouTube. Uh, but also remember to keep your Hopin window open for the chat. Um, and please post any questions. Hello, my name is Fernando. I work as a software engineer at Red Hat on the networking services team. My main work is on NM state. So today I'm going to talk to you about our journey on gathering the runtime network configuration. These are the main steps of our journey, and hopefully the final stop will be NISPOR. OK, so NM state simplifies network configuration of Linux host. But ho, oh, NM state contains two components, which are libnm state, a Python library, and NM state CTL, a command line tool. It provides a declarative API to, go to manage network interfaces, routes, and DNS configuration. So NMSTEC contains three main features, which are reporting the current states so the configuration of one host can be easily transferred to another one, verifies the host configuration with the uh, uh, intended configuration when applying a decided state, and if something went wrong or the verification fails, NMS states allow restoring uh, the previous configuration. Well, here we have a uh, JAML uh, used by NMS state. The first one is uh, defining an Ethernet interface uh, with the state up. IPv4 addresses configure, IPv6, and the right one is configuring a VLAN interface with the state app, the base, base, base interface, and the ID. The thing is that the main idea here is that the user does not, does not need to know the how. The user only needs to know uh, what do they want. This is an example of code of the of the usage of even state Python library. Here we are gathering the current state, then we are getting the interfaces, and for each interface, we are setting the state as up. Finally, we are applying the state, and that's all. With nine lines of code, we can just uh, bring up all the interfaces of the system. So libnm state uh, allow the user to automate everything in a simple way using Python. Why is so important the runtime status for us? Well, nm state must always show the runtime network status. If an state shows an uh, outdated or wrong network status, it will generate a lot of issues because uh, a user will tra transfer that uh, network status to another machine, and the new machine will contain an outdated or a wrong network status, and that could be fatal for the user. In addition, when applying a... Uh, when applying a... Uh, uh, a decided state or a decided uh, network configuration, we are verifying that the current configuration matches the state that the user requested. So if we are gathering the current state or the current configuration in a wrong way, that will generate verification fails, and that will be too bad. So. Our first option was to use uh, Network Manager because Network Manager is the main provider of NMS state currently. And we were using 
uh, network manager through PyGobject object library to manage the on disk uh, or on memory profiles. So we decided that it could be a great idea to use it too for getting the runtime status. The thing is that uh, doing that, we will not need to uh, add more dependencies and to modify a lot the code base. So everything will be simpler. But, well, uh, Network Manager provides two different main objects to manage the, menu, the network configuration, NM setting and NM device. NM setting is managing the profiles and NM device is managing the runtime information from kernel. So we tried to query the whole information from NM device objects, but it was not possible because uh, there were missing objects for some interfaces or there were some objects that uh, were not exposing all the information needed by us. And obviously, we could not use uh, the NM setting object because NM setting is representing the profile, and the profile is an state that a user is defining. So if there are any changes on the kernel side or there are any changes uh, by other tool, the profile will not uh, update the information there. So if we got any information from the setting, it will it it could be outdated. Okay, so we cannot use a network manager to get the runtime network configuration correctly. So what could we do? Um, we thought on CFS. CFS is a pseudo file system that exports multiple Linux kernel subsystem, subsystem information, including the network subsystem. That's nice. CFS is exposing the information of all kinds of interfaces, and that is very good, good for us. In addition, uh, NM, from NM state, it's really easy to read uh, uh, the CFS information as we can do it as any other file on the system. Uh, what is the problem? OK, we found several issues when working with CFS. The first one was when using CFS, we found that some exposing information was not matching the standards. And that is quite bad because we will need to create translators because between CFS and the standard way. In addition, in some cases, uh, the exposed information uh, on CFS depends on the driver. For example, for SREV, uh, the Intel EXGB driver and the Mellanox uh, MLX4 and 5 driver were exposing the information in different ways. So we will not, uh, we were not considering uh, to implement different readers uh, based on the drivers because that will generate a lot of changes on the code and that will generate uh, a lot of code that maybe it will not going to be used uh, anytime. So we thought on sending a patch to the kernel uh, in case that we need to change, for example, uh, the format of the CFS information. But it is a process that is slow and we'll need backporting to older versions. It could generate uh, problems with other users. So we couldn't do it. And also we found another big issue and it is that there can be race, condition or race conditions or inconsistencies due to ongoing transactions. So it's important to note that CFS is not an APA, API, sorry. So exposed parameters could be removed or changed, no providing backward compatibility. And that will be very, very bad for us because we are an API and 
we need to provide backward compatibility. Here we have an example of uh, SIOV. Uh, the first image is from uh, EXGB GBE, uh, device. And the second one is from uh, uh, MLX4 uh, driver. As we can see on the first one, it is not exposing the information about the number of BFs, uh, the offsets, the strides, the total BFs, the BF device. So they were missing a lot of information. And in other cases, the information were parsed in different ways. We got out of ideas. Uh, most of the issues that we were having on NM state were related with outdating information from the current configuration. And we thought that the best option is to use Netly, but the implementation is too much code for NM state because accessing the link uh, data with Python is uh, complicated and will need a uh, few checkers. So we wouldn't want uh, to, to implement again something that other projects implemented their own way uh, of communicating with the kernel using that link. So as other projects were implementing their own way of communicating with the kernel, why no one were doing it in a common way? So we thought that maybe that could be a great idea. But first of all, let's talk about Netlink. OK, so what is Netlink? Netlink is a socket family used use as an interface for communicating between the kernel space and the user space processes. All the information about interfaces are being exposed through this. Indeed, almost all the information of uh, devices on the kernel are exposed through this. So Netlink, in addition, used the Linux kernel lock mechanisms like RCU to avoid race conditions or inconsistencies do it due to ongoing transactions. And it is a stable API, so it will maintain backward compatibility. Only additions are possible. This is very important for us because this is what we are doing right now. So, that link is our solution. We are sure of this. And then uh, we got a NISBOR. <clears throat> Nispor is a native native library that provides unified interface for Linux network state querying. It provides a native native Rust, Python, and C APIs, allowing its use from other projects written in different languages. In addition, uh, it provides a command line tool too, and a Barley interface. So it is possible to use it from uh, Golang or C++ if they uh, access to it through the Barley interface. We noticed that all the projects like uh, TC, uh, Ansible Linux System Role, or Network Manager will benefit from it as they need to gather the runtime network configuration. This way, they could avoid implementing their own way, their own Netlink communication logic, and they could contribute to uh, NISPOR and to reduce the effort to communicate with the kernel. So, this is the demo time. I have prepared. Uh, I have prepared several. Uh, examples, so I can show you a little bit. Let me. Okay, I hope this is fine. So the first thing that they want to show about uh, the the first thing that they want to show you about 
Nispor is the root, so we can get all the roots information just with this simple command. Uh, you can see here, for example, uh, different uh, roots, and for each root, we can see the family, uh, table, protocol, which is the scope, uh, root type like broadcast, unicast. The destination, the interface, and the preferred gateway. Uh, let me see. Let me search for an IPv6. I think I have one of them here. Yeah, we have a unicast one. Or I, I think I do have yeah yeah this one maybe a better one okay I don't think so I will get a better one so uh <clears throat> one for example this is an IPv6 uh an IPv6 root. And as you can see, we are showing table, protocol, scope, root type, and the flags, destination, interface, uh, all the cache uh, parameters, the metric, and the perf. Everything is there and is getting directly from the kernel. That means that uh, if something uh, modifies the rule, when using a link, we will not find uh, any issue, and the configuration will be always updated. Let me show you, for example, uh, this one. This is the state for uh, Ethernet device. Uh, as you can see here, this well, this uh, Ethernet device is down. Um, we can see here the different uh uh interfaces like uh the efa state the state the mtu the flags and the mac address and i have created uh one for example <clears throat> this uh complex one this uh bxlang for the bxlang we have here the state down the mtu flex etc but in addition we have the whole bxlan parameters right so we can see the remotes the bxlan id the base basic phase uh ttl tos uh aging uh the udp udp uh destination port um, udp checksum uh, enable or not uh let's see anything else yeah well all the parameters that are related to the uh that are related to the uh bxlang interfaces so that's all the main idea here is that uh nm state finally was able to get the runtime uh network configuration and other projects are interested on NIS42. So we are reducing the efforts and working together. And in my opinion, that's it's the main point of uh, free software. The meetings. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for your attention and now it's the uh, time for questions. So what are your questions? A couple of questions here in chat. I'll just quickly read them out for you and I'm hoping you can answer them live here. Um, so a question which Till Mass has asked is, will there be an Ansible module for NISPOR? 
maybe as a fat module or a plugin uh uh thank you for that question uh that's a very good question uh we have been thinking on this uh our first idea is to use uh nm state on uh network role of linux system rule so this way uh network role will be using NIST for directly but i haven't i have not uh thought about uh e creating a model for NISPO directly or uh fact mobile or plugin so i think the best approach here that or the approach that they are, we are working on is the is the um is is using nm state uh from the network world. but this is right now we are working on the design of this so um, it's a mid-term long-term feature uh i will not expect it in short term so yeah, I think, I hope this is uh, answering your question. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Uh, what is the, which Edward Berger is asking? So uh, the question is, what's the status on infinite band support? Yeah, this is another good question. We are currently working on this. Uh, we have found some issues with uh, uh, net, what the link is exposing about infinite band interfaces. But uh, we are planning on uh, fixing that uh, problem that we found. But we are uh, working on this uh, right now. So I hope in short or mid term, we are going to have uh, InfiniBand support on Nisport. And the same for uh, Anime State. Uh, we are working on it. We have a draft PR. So that is quite good. Probably for the uh, not the next release of an MS state, but for the next one, we are going to have uh, um, an MS state with uh, InfiniBand support. And for Nispor, I think it's going to take a little bit more, but I hope it will be ready soon. For that, Fernando, we have another question from Marcelo Leitner. Um, they ask, how can I list all IP addresses for the system in a similar note does it make sense to make a fuse backend for NISPOR as a replacement for SysFS to avoid excessive forking in shell scripts? Well, what we are doing now is, to, I, I don't know if it makes sense to make a fuse backend for NISPOR, but I'm sure that uh, what we are doing now is to provide a native uh, Rust, uh, Python, or C API. So, if you are a Python user, you can just use uh, Nispor to gather all the interfaces, and then in a for loop, you can gather all the IP configurations, then list it. I think that it's the best approach now. Maybe we can think on something like the feature that you're proposing here, that Nispor is directly uh, showing the IP addresses, uh, all IP addresses for the system. But we will need to related with some, somehow related to, to the e-phase to do not show uh, IPs without context. But thank you for the suggestion. Uh, I will try to propose that and to talk about this on the, with, with the team. And uh, for now, I think the best option is to use uh, another language to filter the IP addresses of each interface and showing them on a list or your preferred way. I hope Perfect. that's answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Fernando. And thank you, everybody, for asking your questions. And please feel free to carry on the conversation in the breakout room. And I just posted a link to the breakout room where you can um, ask any more questions that you have. Thank you again, Fernando. Thank you very much. Thank you.